Okay, you can take over with the screen sharing. Thank you. Hello there, everyone. Welcome. Can everybody hear me? Great. Thank you so much, Kathy. Welcome, everyone. My name is Melissa Armo. And I own a company called The Stock Swoosh. And today I'm going to lecture about momentum and trading with momentum. And, and really, today we're going to focus on charts. I'm going to give you the information if you want to learn my method and contact me right now because we're going to spend the rest of the time talking here today um, looking at charts, which I think will be very helpful. So here's my contact information. If you'd like to reach out, if you want more information on what I do and the strategy I trade, you can give me a call at 929-3200-GAP or feel free to email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. Also, if you would like a trial to the live trading room, you can email me as well. You can get a free trial for the, for the week. I also am talking on Fox Business News. You can watch me there about stocks in the market. So I teach a class on my method. It's called the Golden Gap Course. It's an online class. I teach my method, it's Saturday and Sunday. I usually do it once a month. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and place stocks that are professional bearish gaps. We are gonna talk about momentum to the upside and the downside today, just so you know, but I do like to focus on the shorts. The next class is November 18th and 19th. If you're interested, you can email me about signing up. It's from nine to five, and the class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. Cost of the class is $4,999. All right, so let's pull up some charts. If you can hang on one second. I'm going to pull up some charts right here. Okay, can everybody see this chart here of Tiva? Actually, let's go back a little bit further here. Can everybody see this chart here of Tiva? Let me know. So one of the interesting things is, and I'm just gonna lecture here and talk as long as we go today here about, about charts. We're gonna first talk about this chart here in the stock Tiva. I just want to note, Tiva is in a downtrend, okay? So the momentum in Tiva, this is a daily chart, is down. It's in a downtrend. It's very obvious now to see this. Maybe not so obvious initially back a couple of months ago. But the fact is that the stock had started breaking back at the beginning of 2016, summer of 2016, right in here is when the chocolate break, it actually was the summer, summer of 2016, more than a year ago. So it's very, very important as a trader, as a day trader, no matter how much money you have, whether you're trading with a small account or a big account, to catch a momentum move in a stock to make money. It's, it's like the difference between night and day. And I know a lot of traders do what they call scalping. They'll scalp something for five cents, 10 cents, 15 cents. I don't like to do that. I'm trying to catch a move in something. And by a move, I mean a large move, as large of a move as I could possibly get on the day because I'm day trading. Although you can use my gap method for swing trades and investments and long-term trades and options. But the idea is that it'll be a lot easier for you to make money as a day trader if you're catching a big move because then it really doesn't matter where you get out. And the object then is obviously only making money and profits. How do you do that? You've got to get the direction of the momentum right, okay? This is very obvious here to anyone, even someone that wouldn't even have ever looked at a chart before, that the stock has been trading down. And actually from 2014, it's hard to believe, the stock was at one point well over $70. High up here was $71.78. And this wasn't that long ago, if you look at it. So this was summer of summer of 2015, actually. Two years ago, the stock was well over 70 bucks. And now today it's worth $12 and some change. Now, I'm gonna go here and show you this. So what do I do? I look at stocks that are gapping. And I look at stocks that are actually gapping down first. So I do look at bullish moves but I like to focus on bearish moves first. In other words, if I don't get 
if I don't get a, a, a good short on the day, then I will focus and look at the longs, just so you know. Anyways, here was a gap down. This was summer of this year, August. So what's a gap? I'm just going to explain this to you very, very basic to understand. A stop gaps when the closing price one day is different from the opening price the next day. That's what a gap is, okay? So in the case of Tiva, Tiva closed here the night before at 31.25. And open here the next day, this is 8.3. See this in here? This is the open of the candlestick here at 25.75. You see this? So the stock gap down, okay? Here's the open, here's the close. And actually, this was a quite sizable gap down. So all a gap is, is when the stock closes at one price at a different number than it opens the next morning. And the U.S. market has a close and open time. The U.S. market closes at 4 o'clock and opens the next day at 9.30, okay? Is everybody with me what a gap is? Does everyone understand what a gap is so far? Okay. Now, what am I looking to do? I'm looking, because this is before this even happens, I'm looking to see if momentum is going to come into this gap. After the fact, it's easy to see, but you don't know this, okay? I'm looking in the pre-market to see if momentum is going to come into this gap. And also, is it going to go up or is it going to go down? Because that matters too. You can have momentum in either direction, up or down. In the case here of the Tiva, though, guess what? The momentum was down. All right? Tiva had a big move in the day, a $3 plus drop. That's momentum as a day trader. Then I want to point out, it also gapped down and had more momentum to the downside the following day, 8.4. Actually, the low here was almost 20 bucks, so 20.41. So do you see here the stock had about a $6 move even in two days? Then it got down again and continued the third day down. Broke $20, went to $18.50, three days down here for Tiva. Do you see that? And it literally kept falling. So this is a great example of momentum that comes into the stock as a result of this. It's really this, which is, which is the gap. This was an earnings gap in Tiva that made it gap down back here on August 3rd. But it's really momentum in the gap that came in and followed through. And in this case, it was selling action. Selling action, and you had shorts in here too that pushed the stock down. Do you see how easy it would have been here to make money short to the downside? Whether you day traded it every day short, whether you whether you bought a put as an option, whether you did a swing trade, it you know, very easy in order to make money with the with the momentum that came in, which was down. Now I want to show you something else. Here, let me blow it up. Back then, a couple of weeks later, September 11th, does everybody see this here? September 11th, Tiva gapped up. Closed here 9-8, 15-50. Opened the next morning here, 17-88. So this is a gap up. And you say, Melissa, okay, well then where's the momentum in this one? Is the momentum to the upside, Melissa, because it gapped up. And it did really gap up. In fact, we'll just look at it here. The close was $15.50. It did gap up over $2 overnight. But guess what? This didn't have any momentum in it to, in the direction of the gap, which was up. So in other words, this didn't have any bullish momentum. This had bearish momentum. This did not have bullish momentum. How do I know? The stock just opened and rallied a little bit on the day, sold off very quickly after the fact. You couldn't even get two green days out of this sucker here. Whereas you got, you know, tons and tons of red days after this gap. Do you see the difference here? Does everybody see what I'm looking at there? And ask me questions if you don't understand. So what I, what I want you to see the difference is the difference between a good gap and a not a good gap. It's a, you know, a gap that you would do and a gap that you wouldn't trade. A, a, what gap, what, what, which gap did you want to trade here? I guess this is what I'm saying. Do you want to trade the gap that gapped down in August in Tiva and get all that selling momentum? 
Or do you want to buy the, the bullish gap, which, which, which was there? It really did have a bullish gap. It really did gap up $2 in the day, and it really did have a rally. But it didn't go anywhere. And so my system is able to predict that. So this was a bust. Never had anything going in it. But guess what? Not everybody would have agreed with me because the stock came into support and people bought it. How do I know that people bought it? The stock did hold in here from 9-11 all the way to almost a month, 10-3. Stock did hold in here almost a month and the stock did have a little bit of a rally back. People bought this in here in the support. In fact, I'm going to take this away so you can see this in here. Pretend none of this happened. Do you see that there? This moving average, this is the blue line is a 20 pair moving average, okay? This chart started to scoop up. So people, not me, I would have never said this, not people that have done my class or are trading with me, but some people, traders, would have thought the stock was going to lift. It was starting to lift. It was starting to scoop in the moving averages. It was starting to move back up around again. And people bought the stock. How do I know? Because the stock held the support in there for a month in a rally. So there were people long the stock in there, in Teva, whether they bought it because it had held the support in the 20 period moving average, whether they bought it because of whatever reason fundamentally, whether they bought it because of the bullish gap back from September 11th, people bought it. Whether they bought it because they thought it was going to fill the gap, which is a term that I do not use, but people do, and it's a horrible, horrible, horrible term. The point is that the momentum in the case of Teva here, guess what? Was not to the upside, even though it had a gap up. Even though I had a bullish gap in September, it didn't follow through. It didn't have any momentum to the upside. The momentum was to the gap that happened in August to the downside. And then what happened then? You got two more gap downs after the fact, and the stock now is trading at 1240. And actually had a gap down here. This was just last week, 11, 11 Low in here was 1085. So from all August, September, October, three months basically, and two days into, into November, the stock was the stock loss basically half its value. Look at that. More than that, if you go back from the from before the gap happened on 81, because it was up in the over 31. So the momentum, the way to make money as a trader with Tiva here was very, very important to know because if you went long the stock thinking the momentum was in the bullish gap or the way it was holding the support the whole month of September, which it was, if you, and the market was was making new highs then too, if you did that, guess what? You lost, unless you got out in there long, which I doubt, okay? Bottom line is that the momentum in Tiva was to the downside the entire time in here. It never had flipped directional bias. The stock was never flipping around, never changed trend, never was in a downtrend to an uptrend, despite the fact it held support, despite the bullish gap up. So it was very easy to make money in Tiva since August short. Almost every day you could have traded it short. And if, in fact, if you did trade it short every day, there would have been a couple of days you lost, but not very many. You could almost count the green bars in this chart back for three solid months. Okay? Very few. In fact, you can see here people even bought this today, which is so idiotic. People even bought this today, which is the stupidest thing in the planet. But the point is, though, that it was easy to make money to the downside playing the momentum, which to me was very obvious. The gap created it. This was the guy. This day here. This was the whole reason that this whole thing just dropped like a brick. In fact, I'm not sure if the stock ever gets over the high of this gap anytime soon ever again. It may not for years. Certainly isn't going to before the end of this year, 2017. But people in here thought it would, okay? They thought it would fill the gap all the way up here, and they went long it. And you can see that people were long in there. Because the stock price did hold that area between 16-something and 17-something and 18-something for a month. But it didn't ever get going. So how do you know which to pick which way to go with these things? How do you know which bullish gaps to buy? How do you know which bearish gaps to short? How do you know which ones to do? Okay, it's very, very important. Now, before we get going here, does anybody have any questions about anything so far that I've discussed? Does anyone have any questions, number one, about Tiva itself, the chart? And then secondly, does anyone have any questions about what I'm even saying at all?
If you do ask me, we have time here. I'm just talking about charts tonight. And we're going to look at other ones here too. But I'm trying to make a point. William says good so far. All right, let's look at another chart. Let's look at the opposite direction. Let's look at Amazon. And look at this thing. Okay. Now, I'm going to talk about Amazon. I think this is very obvious now. Today, stock price closed around 1120-ish over that, that the momentum in Amazon is where? It's to the upside. The momentum in Amazon is what? It's bullish. Now, on the live, live day, this Amazon had earnings out on a Thursday night. I think it was the 27th. Yeah, no, it was the 26th. The night of the 26th, Amazon had earnings, and then the 27th, it opened and had this big bar day. Here's another example of a gap, but this is an opposite direction. This is a bullish gap. So in this case here, in this chart in Amazon, the momentum is, for, is going up, forward. So the stock closed the night before the, the earnings at 4 o'clock at 972.43, and it opened the following morning Friday at 10.58. A tremendous move for the stock, 132 points plus up, and then not only that, it rallied on the day on Friday and you could have bought the stock. Low in here in that day was 1050, high in that day was 1105. A tremendous move for the stock, followed through the next day. The next day it followed through even more. Now I'm gonna go look at the one minute chart on this 1027 day and I wanna show you something here before we go back to the daily. Although I do wanna focus on the daily chart here. Let me just go back. 1027 was Friday. I'm gonna blow this up. Guess what? Some some trader shorted Amazon in here. How do I know? The stock price dropped. And it dropped right in here in the first five minutes of the day, fell into the first five minutes of the day, and people were short this, day traders, thinking the stock would drop, fill the gap, fall in, that they would get some kind of move short in here. Under the it did break the low. Under the low was 1054 for where it opened, and it did drop down here three dollars, which is really though nothing as far as momentum goes in Amazon. Just let me point that out. But Amazon was a buy. The momentum was up in the stock. It seemed aggressive to go long the stock in here. Number one, huge gap up. Number two, huge move in the, in the, since the earnings. And number two, aggressive entry in here to take it on the one minute chart while the stock was still red. All right, this is on the morning of the day of the Friday after the earnings, 1027. And yet, that's exactly what was the right thing to do. Why? Stock price was higher, momentum was up. This stock, here you go, this is a one minute chart, power trended almost all day. In fact, let's see if I can fit the whole day in here in the one. I'm gonna squeeze it in. There's the whole chart of Amazon, and the one minute chart of Amazon for the entire day of that day that it power trended higher. Look at that chart. Let's see if we can get it all in. There, you did. The stock never, 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 never pulled back the whole day. Continued higher the next day. But that's momentum. That's bullish momentum. Look at this. 934. 1018. For almost four, for 45 minutes, more than that, a little bit, the stock traded straight up. And if you were long the stock in there, you made money just, just watching and sitting there at your screen. And that was a beautiful, easy trade to do. I called an option in it because it's very expensive. So you could have day traded the option in it or you could have day traded it as a stock if you wanted to. It continued all day. But the point is though that, do you see how easy it is to make momentum, to make money with momentum? And to make a lot of money, okay, because you plop on the size, you also get the volatility. You get you get a big move. Amazon had a big move. Tiva had a big move. Opposite directions, but the gap was the driver for the move, okay. And then guess what? There's nothing to do here but what? Buy it. You could have bought it here. You could have bought it here. You're certainly not shorting it in here. 
You could have bought it here. You could have bought it today. You can probably buy it tomorrow. Stock's going to make another new high. It looks like it's it's almost doing it now. 1122.79. Next target's 11.25. So do you see here again, gap fill idea doesn't work. You want to find gaps that have momentum going in the direction of the gap. It's not every one, though, as I showed you with Tiva versus the Tiva bullish gap, the Tiva bearish gap. Okay. Now I'm going to point out another one here for you. On the previous earnings, Amazon did not perform, whatever. I don't even remember what it said. I'm going back in the summer. Amazon had a gap down on the earnings that was 728. I want to show you this. The stock gapped down. The night before it closed at 1046, and it gapped down in the morning. It opened at 1012. And there you have it. But guess what? If you tried to short that on the day, it was very hard to make money. It probably did not. Stock closed with a green body on the day. Couldn't have made money going long. Couldn't have made money going short. It was nothing. It didn't have any momentum in it. So you can't short every down gap. And you can't go long every up gap. Just like I showed you with Tiva. And in this case here, you had a bearish gap down. But it, it wouldn't have rated well for my system. I, I didn't do anything with it. Okay. Do you see that? So gaps are these wonderful, amazing things. But... You've got to find the ones that qualify. And this is what I do. This is what I teach in my course. I look at 26 points in a daily chart to determine if something's going to follow through with momentum and continue in the direction of the gap or not. And if not, then I don't do it at all. Okay? Because you see here in the case of Amazon, if it's not going to follow through in the direction of the gap, which this one here was down, then you just lay off of it. Because it's still gapped down. So you still don't want to buy it there. It's, it's a no play or what I call a no trade. But do you see here how easy it was to make money going long Amazon, no matter, no matter what you wanted to do, okay? And same thing with Tiva, very easy to make money in Tiva to the downside. Now I'm gonna go show you another one here. CMG. CMG, okay, another beautiful chart that has huge momentum, dropping like a brick. What's the directional bias going on in this? Where's the momentum? It's to the downside, all right? Ever since the gap down that happened back here, 620, I forget what this was. I think it was earnings. This is CMG. High of the day was 444.60. So the stock closed here the night before 448 and opened in the morning at 444.60. Stock closed here, gap down. Huge red bar in the day. Stock dropped 20 points plus. On this day here, 620, you could have shorted CMG. And look what it did after the fact. It almost made like a slidey board and it went like that. Literally from 620, actually it was a month, in one month's time, a little bit more, the stock dropped and lost more than 100 points. And ever since then, it's lost another 100 points. So there again, do you see the momentum in CMG was where? To the downside. So you can make money doing what? Buying puts in CMG, going short the stock, the momentum's to the downside. And that's very obvious to someone like me. But what's the driver? What's the reason? What's, what's making it happen? What's creating it? The gap, okay? None of this stuff in here. The stock was starting to get bought in here, lifting. Again, you had the moving average of scooping, scooping, scooping. There were lots of green bars going on in here. Stock based and was scooping and had some buying coming in from 823. Actually, for two months, actually two months, the stock was, was it hanging on in there and had some buying. But it wasn't controlling the stock. No gap ups in there move the stock. They weren't controlling the stock. They weren't creating momentum. Not easy to make money even if you went long in there or you might have lost. Does everyone see? The way to make money trading, I'm gonna look at another bullish one now here, but it's gonna be the market. The way to make money trading is by trading with momentum. But you have to find, okay, the momentum 
and you have to know where to enter it, what day to enter it, whether you're getting out that day, where's your exit as a day trade, as a swing trade, as a put, if you're doing an option, are you doing a day trade option? Are you doing an, uh, an option you're holding overnight for several weeks or months? Okay. Many, many people talk about trading and a lot of people think trading is hard and difficult. And one of the reasons that people fail so often is that they simply do not get the direction right in their trades. And when, and they think that they do because they might be in a trade and be up and not get out, or they might be in a trade and get out with some money, but not enough, okay? Or they might take some winning trades, but they have more losers than winners, and they don't understand what's going on, what are they doing wrong, why? And they think that trading doesn't work, but they're trading things that they should not be trading that make no sense in the wrong direction, stocks that don't have momentum, that don't have volatility and they're in the wrong direction and they're playing them the wrong days. You can't trade every stock every single day in here even if you were to go long the market, which is very, 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 very strong or even Amazon too. You can't go long Amazon every day and make money. You can't go long the market every day and make money. But th these are two, both in two huge, huge, massive uptrends. You have to pick the proper days that they will have momentum. And if you choose to do something in a swing trade overnight, you're going you're gonna to suffer it through and wait for it to make the second momentum move. Could be the next day, like an Amazon, or it could take a week or longer. Okay? Does anyone have any questions so far here? Is anything I'm saying making any sense at all? No questions? Is anyone listening to me? <laughs> Besides Kathy, <laughs> who has no interest in trading, but does like to listen to me talk. All right, we're going to look at a live one here. WTW, okay, is Weight Watchers. This is a live gap. I'm going to bring it on back. It's happening tonight. It's kind of a bummer because, as I told you earlier, I like to short, and the stock is not gapping down. It's gapping up. So let's take a, let's take a look at a live gap that's happening here right now. Let's see if this momentum in WTW is going to fall through tomorrow, as of right now anyways. You never know where these things are going to open. So WTW is having earnings or reporting right now live. It's 4.55 Eastern time. It's at 49.50. Let's take a look at this stock. And here we have it. So pretend tomorrow morning was 9.30 Eastern time. Again, I've been trading gaps for a very long time, nine years. I created my own method. I'm not going to take the time to rate this right now, but eyeballing it, knowing what I know, this is a good long if it opens here tomorrow. I don't know if it will open here. But if it does, this is a good long with momentum. First target's 50, not that far away. Most likely target's 52 in the day. If the stock would open right around here. So the momentum in WTW Weight Watchers is where? To the upside. It's proving itself. It's proving that it is higher and finally doing it. And it really had fallen off a cliff here. All of 2014, 2015, 2016. Okay, I forget when Oprah bought into this. When was that? Does anybody remember? I remember Oprah bought a big stake in this. It's obviously helped the stock a lot. Anyways, the stock then moved into a positive movement not that long ago. So it was an important earnings for, for the stock tonight, which I talked about today in the trading room. It had to gap up and follow through, and if it didn't, it was going to be a good short. But as it turns out, it did not gap down. It gapped up, and this is, looks like a good long here tomorrow. So the momentum in WTW is where? To the upside. It's coming in. It's pushing through. It's getting bought. Okay? So it will be very easy tomorrow, to, if this opens around here, to go along the stock and make money. But you would have to know to do that. Because not every gap up in here could you have gone long and made money. Any questions about WTW? 
This is a live gap. I don't, is there anything else that's gapping right now live that anybody wants me to look at, actually? Car? All right. I'm assuming this is earnings. Galahad just gave me a, a ticker symbol to take a Ooh, look at this thing here. A uh, car is happening live right now. Stock closed at 41.43. This will hold the gap down. I don't know where this opens, but it's not going to turn around. All right, let's look at this puppy. So here's car. So this does not look as easy, I will tell you, as WTW to do. This is going to be right on the cusp. I don't want to rate this now again because it could look very different in the morning. I think it holds the gap down, but I don't know if this rallies on the day or has a big sell-off. I don't know. This is on the cusp here. This, will, this is not as easy as WTW to read. Yes, the stock's gapping down. Yes, it's gapping down $5 overnight. But immediately looking at this, I'm not in love with this thing. But the nice thing about having a system, which I do, and I do it for myself because I go through my points every morning, is I just follow the system. If the system tells me it's good, I do it. If the system tells me it's not, I don't. If it rates for the 26-point system, I watch it and set up and do it. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But eyeballing it here, this is not as good as WTW. AMC, I'll look at that one too. Man, has this gotten cheap. Cheap, cheap, cheap. AMC, what is this here? Looks like it did gap up. Now it's down. Um, looks like it had a pop in here up at 1320, 1330, 1335. Eh, I'm not crazy about this either. So far, the three that we've looked at here, WTW is the best gap and it's long. For tomorrow morning but I mean there's a million things out tomorrow morning as well so I could change my mind but as of right now just with these three picks WTW looks the best again it's the idea of getting something that you feel a hundred percent conviction in it doesn't mean that every trade that I take works I've had some losers certainly in in, in a year's time you have losers but I don't have as many losers as I have winners and the reason is that I'm very good at spotting and finding momentum before it comes in. If you can find and get an enter a trade before the momentum comes in, that's how you're going to make a lot of money. And not only that, it doesn't matter where you get out. I don't. I rarely get out of a stock if I'm short at the low of the day. And I rarely get out of a stock if I'm long at the high of the day. It's almost impossible anyways. But the point is, though, that it doesn't matter where you get out if you get the direction right and you capture a piece of the move. Your, your goal is only to capture a piece of the move anyways, whatever the piece of the move happens to be. Uh, what was the one from Wednesday? What did we do on Wednesday? What was Wednesday's gap? Galahad. This did flip. This did flip. I mean, I'll, I'll watch this tomorrow morning, but this was up and then it flipped down. What was Wednesday's gap? Galahad, do you remember? The most recent thing that I did short. <laughs> well, we can go over Verizon. I wanted to go over what Wednesday's was. I forget. That was a week ago. Verizon here. Here, let me show you an example of, of, of how easy you can make money with momentum. If you remember what we did Wednesday, Galahad, right in the room, because I can't remember right now. I'm too tired. Verizon was a watch today. Here's an example of how, that, how easy it is to make money on momentum, okay? So the stock dropped, gapped down, fell hard, kabooms. You could have done this aggressively in the morning and got out. What if you didn't? What if you missed it? What if you didn't notice it right away? You could have still played this momentum. You could have played this momentum on the rally back in here to get a drop in it down in here. It doesn't matter where if you would have taken it here and shorted it if you want to get out here, 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 here. Do you see this? If I was drawing like a triangle, like I'm just drawing this now with my arrow, here's the drop, here's the triangle, here's the drop, here's the triangle, here's the drop. 
So when you're shorting, you want to get in at the top of the triangle with the drop down there. But how do you know where that is? And not only that, how do you know it's something like Verizon? And if you're looking at this just right here at this, you, you may not know that's even going to work. The stock really has dropped off for the last two weeks. I mean, the stock could have flipped today and gone green very easily, and the market was strong too. And this was not an earnings gap either, by the way. So it's, it, I, I have a method that I look and I rank apps in the morning in the pre-market or at night, like you could rate the WTD, WTW tonight or any of the other ones we just talked about, CAR and um, the AMC, and determine what to do with them the next day. You still have to check them in the morning. But you, you only need one stock. You only need one trade. You only need one pick every day to, to meet your goals, to make 20 grand a month or 30 grand a month, okay? Or 40. Although I don't think, I don't, I don't, I don't think December is the greatest month to be stepping up your risk, but you know, I've thought about increasing my risk for this month because we're still in earnings season. It's still busy time right now. Bottom line is that Many, re many people complain about trading and think it's difficult and hard. It's that they don't know what to do. They really don't. They think they do because they make money occasionally in trades. And they may know how to read charts in some form or fashion, but not in an ability to predict momentum, which is something that I do very well. So there's one out this week. There's a key, key earnings out this week. And I gave you a free trade here tomorrow. It's WTW. Assuming that opens around where it's at right now, which which I don't know if it I don't know if it will, but if the chart looks the same as it does tonight here at five o'clock, it's a good long tomorrow. And I gave you the targets. Anyways, this is earnings out. Equifax, Thursday night, and it's a big one. I don't know what this is going to do. Nobody knows because. Only the people of the company know what the earnings were. It's third quarter report, and it will report Thursday night after the bell. So the stock will gap. It could gap up. It could gap down. In fact, let's look at the whole chart. If the stock gaps up, and I'm just telling you here again, I don't know what it does. If the stock gaps up here, around 114-ish, 115 is a lot better. It's an immediate buy. Stock will have a massive rally be a great long. It will do a correction after this horrible thing happened here with all the bad news and everything else that happened. If you've been following this, if not, you can Google and read about it online. I actually did a television spot about it like a month ago, two months ago now, beginning of September. You can go look at my YouTube. Anyways, bottom line is, if this stock gaps up on the earnings Thursday night here, right here, it's a great buy. I don't think that's going to happen. It's nothing that I know. It's a gut feeling. I think the stock's going to gap down. I think it will continue with the momentum that has been happening for the last two months. And I believe the stock will gap down, and I have no idea where. So until it does, you don't know, because again, it could gap up. But if the stock gaps down, it could have a crushing move in the gap itself. It could have a crushing move in the gap itself, meaning let's just pretend it's Thursday night at the close, 4 o'clock. Earnings haven't reported yet. Stock closed at 108. This stock could have a crushing move in the gap overnight from Thursday night to Friday morning's open at 9.30, and the stock could be like at some sick number, like $90. The stock could lose like $20 in the gap. That can happen. That does happen. It happens all the time. And I don't know what it'll do in the live day or if I'll trade it because I will have to rate it with my system then Friday morning to watch and see what to do. But that's a possibility. That in and of itself is momentum, although I do not trade the post and pre-market because I think it's very wild and it's, it's very risky, which it is, but you can make money doing it, okay? If the stock gaps down a normal amount, three bucks, four bucks, five bucks, whatever, I'll still look at it, I'll still rate it, I'll still watch it to do as a down gap because I like to short. I don't know where it'll go or move, but I will tell you, if it has... A gap down at three, four dollars or something like that, normal size, not something crazy, like 90, like I just said, then the stock is still on its way to 90 as a long-term trade, as a swing trade, as an option trade. But it could do it at the gap. It could. 
I think the stock has a big move Thursday night, whether it's up or down. And if it doesn't, I'll be surprised. And I'll also be surprised if it, if it gaps up, but it could. I mean, who knows? You don't know what these companies' earnings are going to say. Nobody knows. And that's very, that's, that's, that's so important also, and it's very important to note, and that's one of the reasons why gaps are so great to day trade. Because no one knows, because of the fact that no one knows, okay, there are very often people in it in the wrong direction. And that's what makes it great to play after the fact when the gap is there. But you got to know which ones to do. you got to know the good ones. You can't go long every bullish gap. You can't short every bearish gap. you got to go with the good ones, the ones that are going to have momentum. There's usually one every day. But you don't know to get up in the morning and see them or at night. You want this to go to hundred dollars? I don't. I don't. I'm. I think this says something sick, like ninety bucks, or it just does a normal one. A hundred is eight bucks away. That would be a pretty decent size gap for this. But who knows? It could. Um, any questions so far from anyone at all? about anything I said here. It sounds like Galahad's in Equifax already. <laughs> I'm gonna pull up a PowerPoint here in one second here, and you can feel free to ask me any questions. But I give everybody a free trade here if this, if this, uh, if this works. WTW, if it opens tomorrow morning, which I don't know, if it opens around that 49.50 area. So if you're interested in what I do, learning my method, I teach a class. I said this at the beginning, but some people came in late. It's called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. The class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. I only have two more classes before the end of the year, November 18th and 19th, and one class in December. The cost of the class is $49.99. You will learn how to trade gaps and you will learn how to predict where stocks are going to the gap in my course. It's a, it's a, it's a mind opening course where you will see things very, very differently. And um, I don't think anyone that's done my class hasn't, hasn't learned quite a lot. Even people have been trading for a long, long time. I'm very good at what I do. I have a niche, okay? I don't trade a million strategies. This is all that I do, okay? But I've been doing it though for nine years. And I think it's very important when you're trading to be focused on one strategy. It's really about chunking it out. You get up in the morning and you're looking for one thing to do and you're focused. You don't have to do a million things to make money. And if you're trying to make 20 grand a month and if you're trying to make a lot of money and if you want to do this for a living, whatever amount of money that means for you, 100 grand a year, more than that, okay, you really, really have to be focused on what you're doing. You cannot trade all day. You can't take pot shots and stuff. I firmly believe in order to make even, you know, $500 a day, you gotta trade with size. And by size, I mean a couple thousand shares in a trade. Otherwise, you're doing, you know, 20 trades a day. And the chances of you have being positive, all of them is zero, okay? It's about quality and focus on what you're trying to do. So I have a system I created. And if you decide to do my course, you can join my live trading room. You cannot join the live training room before doing the class. But in the morning in the room, I say what gaps I like. I give my point system. I give the targets. I give the support. I give the resistance. And you just follow it, okay? I quickly want to go over here the results for the month of October. October was a good month. And I've been on TV, so there were some days in here I didn't train. 10-2 was off for TV. 10-3 was TTS. I can't believe that. Actually, 10-2 was the day of that shooting. And I was scheduled to be on and I was bumped because of shooting. There was another shooting yesterday. If I was supposed to be on TV today, I would have been bumped because of that shooting yesterday. Can you believe that? In fact, today is November what? November 6th. Two shootings in the last month. This world is crazy. Ugh, I can't believe it. Was, that, was, that was two shootings in a month. 10-3 was TTS, $1,500. 10-4 was Tiva. Look at this. Tiva was a nice one back, 10-4. 10-5, no trades. 10-6 is cost. That was a nice one. That week total, 5,600, and there were two days, no trades. 10.9 was another cost, 3,400. 10.10 was a little one, Dow. 10.11 was a loser in HDSN. WMT was a winner. 10.12, JPM was a loser. 
Tiva was another winner there that day. Tiva was a good one. 1013 was a TV day off. Weekly total 6,525. Then the third week in October, 1016 Spy was a loser. Apple was a winner. Hog was a loser. NWY was a winner. Spy was a loser. 1018 IBM was a really good one. 1019 was Apple. That was a great gap. That was a short in Apple on 1019. 1020 was G was a loser. CLG was a winner. That was a great week. 11,205, the week of 1016. Then 1023, Matt was a winner. 1024, GE was a loser. Loji was a loser. I did Matt break even. Tried to come back that day, couldn't do it. That was a losing day, 1024, which will happen some days. 1025 was Juniper, loser, AMD winner, huge winner. That was a great gap. 1026 was CLG twice. Actually, the first trade was a winner. I just didn't get out. It bounced. So I lost in the first one. Good one for the second one. Huge move in CLG. Big day. 1027 was a TV day off, and the week's total was 9350. And then MRK was 1030, 900 profit. 1031 was two trades in Halloween. One was a loser. Actually, two trades in QCOM, so it was three trades. Two, two ticker symbols, QCOM. So it was a great month. Way more than 20 grand over 35 grand, but you would have had to risk, you know, a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars risk in some of those trades. I will tell you that you can make money in the market, but the problem is a lot of people just aren't very focused. I tend to get out in the morning quick. Some trades I did hold a little bit longer. It's not often though. It's certainly not every day. You don't need to risk this much if you want to hit these numbers. If you risked even half what I did, you would have had a great month in October. Good results though for October it was earnings season and we're going to look to continue that this month in November. So does anyone have any questions here? We went over the gist of everything in the charts. I don't know if anybody else has anything else they want to go over. If you're interested in a class or a trial, you can email me. I do offer free trials for one week. So you can trial the room this week. WTW is a long watch for me tomorrow, but I prefer to short as I told you. So I'll be looking for shorts. Not crazy about car. I will watch it. I will rate it. The big one this week will be EFX if it, if it does anything at all, which I don't know, but it would be a great gap down if it does something significant. I've got some time left here. Quiet group tonight. Ask me some questions if you want to. I'm here. Is there anything anyone wants to ask me about any stocks, any ticker symbols, any trades, the market, anything specifically about my class? If you're interested in the trial, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. If you're interested in signing up for the course, email me there too. You will definitely learn a lot if you come and trade with me. And if you've never traded gaps before, I tell you, they're great to trade. As far as I'm concerned, it's the only way to make money as a day trader. There's too many different things out there. You cannot buy every support level and make money or short of a resistance level and make money. Half of the time, they don't work. A gap is something very unique and very different. And it's the momentum that comes into the stock. And I showed you a couple great examples here tonight of how you really got big moves in those gaps, both up to the upside and the downside. And that's how you can make money easily. And when you don't see something like that, then you don't trade. And there were days, like I said, where in October you don't trade. So, Hale, do you have a question? That's a unique name. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. I hope so. I see a lot of new names here tonight. If you want to ask me something, feel free. It's been a good year. 2017 was a good year for me. We'll see what the close of the year brings, but I'm definitely on point this year. Listen, here's my email. I think you guys and girls were up too late watching football last night. Because you seem very quiet and tired. And you got an extra hour of sleep with daylight savings time. You should be raring to go. It's only 5.15 Eastern. <laughs> You're up too late on football night. All right, everybody. Email me if you have any questions. Call me if you have questions. If you want to try out of the room, reach out to me too. Hope you learned something tonight looking at these charts. Uh, Sohail has a question here. Melissa, do you only focus on one to three stocks a day? I occasionally will rate more than that, but it doesn't mean I'm watching them. 
So if I get up in the morning, I may rate five things, 10 things, but it doesn't mean I'm watching all five or 10, okay? I will be looking at a couple, one or two, usually not even three. If I have to flip to three, then, you know, obviously I'm not having a good morning. So I like to focus on one or two, but I might rate more than that. And then I kind of put them in order. And I say, this one's 20 points, this one's 21, this one didn't get the rating, and I stack them in order. So right now it's very busy. We looked at three tonight. There's more tonight, I'm sure. Galahad just gave me his favorites, but there's a, there'll be more tomorrow morning. So I may rate, you know, 15 things tomorrow. So it's I only watch, though, usually one or two. I can pretty much narrow it down. Mm -mm -mm. You know, these are the ones. And so that's what I like to do. And I do tend to go to the bearish side. And, and it's funny because we're in a bullish market, but it doesn't matter. Thank you, Melissa. You're the best. You're welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Have a great night, people. Take it easy. If you want to trial, email me, and I will see everybody else that's already signed up tomorrow morning in the room. If you do WTW, watch where it opens. Be careful. Good luck. Market looks higher tomorrow, too. Excellent. Good luck. Thanks, Kathy.